Oh, hi, I'm Ami G. Schmid. You can call me Ami. And I'm zooming in from Brattleboro, Vermont. And welcome. So today we're going to do, um, basically it's an energy medicine routine that Donna Eden came up with. But Donna Eden's daily energy medicine routine is a five minute routine. And I have made it into an, basically an hour. <laughs> So that sort of gives you a little bit of heads up that it's not just Donna Eden's routine, but I suggest that um, you check out Donna Eden online and do her five minute routine every day because it really helps a lot. So today we're going to add in some mind, body, spirit uh, influence into the, the routine. So I've been 40 years studying um, a lot of different things and this is kind of a accumulation of all those tools not all of them but a lot of them those tools that I've been accumulating um, into this expanded version of Donna Eden's routine so I want to start off by saying um, we all have a different belief system but I'm just going to ask you to open your mind to this way of thinking that I'm going to introduce that we think of ourselves as a human being in a physical body but i'm going to ask us right now to suspend that belief and in in its place to try out this belief that we are a spiritual being having a human experience in a physical body so we're much larger than this human experience and we're much larger than this physical body and we're an energetic being that's intermingling with all the energy that exists. And so today we're going to tap in and out of that way of being in an energetic body within an energetic existence. And right now at this day, in this day and age, we are in especially tumultuous energetic time. The energy is very tumultuous. You know, people are calling it a collective experience where there's so much happening you know with COVID-19 and the pandemic and with our awakening into racial injustice and racism and coming to terms with that especially those of us in white skin coming to terms with that it's very um, disruptive to the way things were and we want to break up the status quo it's just also difficult it's challenging and also with the climate crisis and all the things that are happening on the earth. So we're feeling this collective stress. And part of that stress has to do with the energetic field is in chaos right now. So we want to clean up our own. We want to put our reset our own button so that we feel more calm and connected. And we want to help the energetic field. So we're going to tap into that a little bit today too. And the other thing that I wanted to add in is this thought that I just heard this the other day and I, I love it, so I want to share. Imagine that we have a glass and we're filling it up with water. And every day there are challenges, every moment from internally to externally to you know what's, what's happening in, in the energetic field, there are these challenges that pour water into our glass and the glass fills up and we feel like we can handle things we've got this we've got this glass of water i can handle this glass of water and it's filling up and there could be one drop just one little thing that causes that water to overflow and all of a sudden we're not handling it well and so the idea is not to have stress because that that's part of that's part of this existence the idea is to pour out some of, if not all of, the water every day so that it doesn't get to that point where one drop is going to make it overflow. So that's part of what doing this energy medicine and um, any kind of anything that makes you feel like you're pouring some of that stress out is a good thing. So every day, think about that, that whatever you do to help you pour out some of that water, some of that stress is really helpful. So 
we're going to get started with our routine, which is going to pour out hopefully the whole glass of water, empty it out. And we're going to start with tapping. So we're going to start tapping using our fingertips under the middle of the eyes on the bone and just gently tap. And while we're tapping, we're going to breathe. Inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. And notice as you're breathing in that your belly gets larger. It extends. It expands. When that happens, you know you're breathing correctly. Because we don't always breathe correctly. Sometimes we hold our breath. Sometimes we get mixed up with our, our breathing in and out and breathing in and filling up the lungs, the diaphragm pushing down into the abdominal cavity and pushing the belly out with the inhale. And then everything comes back down with the exhale. So it's a good cue that you're breathing correctly. That's in a way that's most helpful to your physical body and your spirit. When your belly expands or extends on your inhale. And slow down your inhale and your exhale. You'll find that that may happen naturally. If it doesn't, just make an effort to take in more breath and really blow it out. Let it go. You might even make sound like a sigh or a huh while you're exhaling. And you're on mute, so no one will hear you. No need to be self-conscious. Just do what you need to do to really spill water out of that glass. <sighs> then we're going to continue breathing and bring the tapping down to come, to come find the middle of your collarbones and come just under the middle of your collarbones. And Start tapping in there. Some people have a divot there. Not everybody does, but start tapping and breathing. Inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. So while we're doing this, often it feels better to close the eyes and tune in. And that's a great thing to do. And I'm going to suggest that at some points that you offer yourself the chance to open your eyes and still tune in, to start getting used to what it's like to be in the world, in our daily life, while tuning in. It's not something that we naturally do, so it's a, a practice. How to be in front of others while tuning in. How to tune in while being around others in the world. So now we're going to go to the third spot. And I, I like to use my knuckles for this one. And it's right in the center of the chest, right in the breastbone, and right on top of the sternum. And again, inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. <sighs> this is a fun one to make noise on. <sighs> I don't want you to bang on yourself too much. So we're going to move to the fourth one. This is our fourth last tapping spot. And um, I find that my shoulders don't naturally go into this spot. So I like to get my shoulders ready. So arms up in the air in a, a Y shape. Arms in the air like you just don't care. Fingertips up, shoulders down, 
squeeze the shoulder blades together. Try to keep your knees soft. Sometimes when we stand and we're working different parts of the body, we tend to want to lock in at the knees. Let's try to pay attention to the knees when they lock in. Just loosen up and bring the arms out to a T. Shoulders down. Squeeze the shoulder blades together in the back. Try and keep your arms out straight while squeezing the shoulder blades and check your knees. W, shoulders down, squeeze those shoulder blades together. And arms out into double L's, shoulders down, squeeze the shoulder blades together. And now our shoulders are in the proper position. So you're gonna keep your shoulder blades squeezing together. And then we're gonna tap into the bra line, into the ribs. Inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the mouth. So every exhale, at the end of the exhale, try to squeeze that last breath out, giving lots more space and room for the next breath, the next inhale, to fill up the lungs all the way up to the collarbones, all the way to the back, all the way down to the diaphragm, and all the way forward, filling up the lungs. Okay, so we're done with our tapping part. Shake out the arms. And we're gonna scrape from the shoulder down to the hip and throw away anything that you're caught along the way. So what we're doing here is we're crossing the energetic line, crossing the energy. And while we're at it, just in case something got caught in the energetic field on your body, we're starting to clean it off and throw it into a fire or water or the center of the earth, or break it up with sound so that it can be purified back into light. Anything that caught, got caught and is ready to be let go of and be uh, reconstituted <laughs> as light. <sighs> and we're gonna do this for the whole body. So think of your body in panels from top to bottom, scrape all the way down and throw into this fire that you've created or water or the center of the earth, or just break it up. Imagine that you can reach your whole back and scrape down there also. Get all of your physical body scraped off. And when you do this, you might start feeling things under that first layer that want extra scraping off. So just go into those places that you maybe feel tension or pain or discomfort of some kind. Whew. and you'll start feeling lighter and lighter. Throw it into the fire. Break it up. And then just to make sure we got it all, imagine yourself as a little figure standing in front of you. And as we do this, I wanna invite you to feel it happening in your physical body. So imagine your physical body is standing in front of you within this little miniature figure and it's facing you. And you're gonna use your fingers and you're gonna scrape around it so the energetic body is inside, on and outside. Most people talk about the aura as being the part of the energetic body that's outside. So you're gonna scrape everything off, throw it into fire, whatever you're taking off or water or the center of the earth or break it up into light. And then we're going to take our energetic fingers and stretch them out of our physical fingers and go inside of that body. And take anything that's inside that's ready to be cleansed, that got caught in the inside of the energetic body. And hopefully you'll start feeling this. And we're going to take all the air around us and we're gonna put that into the fire or water or core of the earth. Take it, scoop it up like you're swirling into a little, like you're making cotton candy. Swirl it all up 
throw it into the fire, water, center of the earth, break it up. And now that little body that's standing in front of you, that is you, so you're going to feel this happening while you're doing it, this little figurine body is facing you, looking at you, and we're going to do something that's going to kind of strengthen the aura so that things don't get caught in it so easily. And I'm going to show you how to do it, and then we can do it together or on your own. But take your two fingers, and we're going to point to the top above the head of this body and go around the body in a clockwise fashion while we say or sound OM all the way around. And then we're going to close the circle, start from the top, and go down to the bottom saying the word peace and then start the circle on the left and go right and say peace so it's om peace peace we're going to do this while we're looking at the front of our eyes and the whole physical body that body's going to turn around we're going to do the same thing to the back of the body and we're going to do the same thing to the front of the body so three times we're going to do this so here we go have your little figurine standing in front of you and imagine on top of the head we'll start Om peace, peace. Turn the body around so you're facing the back head. Om peace. Peace. One more time, turn that body around so you're facing the eyes. Oh. Peace. Peace. And then just stand with your body for a moment. Take a breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. Soften your knees. And we're going to start marching. And this has to do with the energetic field, crossing the arms, crossing the energetic field. Think about a little string attached to each knee, and somebody up in the atmosphere is lifting the knees, nice and light, lifting the knees. Ah, and as your knees come up, your physical hips are starting to warm up. As your arms come up, your shoulders are starting to warm up. And we're going to just bring a little physical exercise and movement into our energy routine here. So let's get a little more range of motion in the shoulders now that they are warmed up. A little bigger swing. A little higher if you want to. This is all if you want to, if it feels right for your body right now. And then we're going to add a little more range of motion by scooping up behind you and throwing over to the front. It's also a little brain food, mind brain food, to be doing all these different things. And then we're going to slow it down in reverse directions. And I just want to let you know that it's okay to smile. It's okay not to smile. It's okay to have your eyes open. It's okay to soften your gaze. Try different things. Experiment with this. And we're going to touch the instep. And we're going to do a couple of things while we're doing this motion. One is lift up from your inner thigh. Get a little inner thigh workout. The other is think about anything that might be coming out still. Maybe there's still something in your physical body or you just picked up something. And you're taking it off from the foot. It's coming out through the sole of the foot. <laughs> we have a sole 
of the foot and take it into your hand and fling it and whoo, turn it into light. And if you slow this down, you're also taking some time to practice balancing in a physical body. Do a little balancing. All right, so now we're gonna kick out to the side. Arms are swinging the opposite direction. And think about your outer thigh lifting. So we'll get a little outer thigh workout. And again, we're balancing. So you could kind of start to consider that your energetic body is coming through the physical body, down the legs, down the feet, and rooting down into the earth. And that there's a stretchy root connection so that you're connected even while you kick out. And while one leg is kicking out, the other leg has that nice, tight, firm connection to the center of the earth, rooting down. And they get to change and take turns. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's do some ice skating. Crossing the arms in the front, kicking back. And you might feel a stretch in the front of the upper thighs. That's your quadricep muscles getting a nice stretch. At least warming up into stretching. So it's fun to pull the imagination in while doing exercise. So wherever you're ice skating right now, think about what you're wearing. If you have a fur muff, what kind of hat? What color is your coat? What do your ice skates look like? And see if you can feel that mist of snow from the person in front of you who's ice skating and it's scraping up off the ice and it's sort of misting in your face. Breathe in that nice, crisp, fresh air. And then when exercising muscles in the physical body, whatever we do to one, we wanna to do to the opposing. So first, we're stretching the quads here. I wanna work the hamstrings, which is the back of the thighs a little bit. So take a moment to just kick up, kick up, kick up. That gets into that hamstring work. And we're gonna kick forward and reach for the opposite foot. So we're lifting and working the quadriceps, lifting from the front of the thigh and stretching the hamstring. So we're doing the opposite of what we just did when we were behind. And then as we warm up, we can work a little more into the calves point and flex. Push your heel to the wall in front of you as you warm up. If you start out and it feels a little twangy, don't push so hard. Wait till you warm up to push a little harder. And when you warm up, you can push your heel forward. And then we're gonna just reach for the out step, the outer part of the foot, and get a twisting action in here. And notice that this whole time we've been balancing on one foot at a time, practicing balance. Okay, so give yourself a little wiggle, shake your legs out of your hips. Give your body a little shake, shake, shake your belly, shake your bottom. 
do a little football warm up. Shake it out. Let your whole body shake. Let your spine move your shoulders and hips. And as we're doing this, right outside my my door, the window, it the wind is like <laughs> it's working. We're working together. <sighs> we'll just move. You do a little dance, have a little fun. <laughs> Whatever your dance move is, break a move. Wahoo! We are warmed up. We can move and groove. Woo! 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 <laughs> Dance like you're free. Yeah. Shake it out. Beautiful. All right. We're going to do a little bit of arm workout. If you have weights or a stretchy band, you can use them. Um, if you don't, this is what working with a stretchy band looks like. If you don't have weights or a stretchy band, we're going to use the air like weights. So pick up a 40 pound weight. And we're going to get the body, the physical body, into this kind of alignment so our arms can just do all the work and the rest of us is safe. So bend your knees a little, ground down into your feet, get your hips a little bit of a pelvic tilt, zip up in the front like you have a zipper from the pubic bone zipping up and pulling in the belly and the ribs while you're zipping zipping up shoulders back and down head is lifted from the crown and then we're going to pull the um the upper arms down and back and reach forward and pull back squeezing those shoulder blades together so if you're not using weight you want to resist that pull back as if you were pulling a 40 pound resistance <sighs> squeezing into the middle of the shoulders and the back <sighs> even if you have a weight we still want to think about that resistance <sighs> keep your neck long Look forward and down a little bit. It's really easy to tighten up different places when we're working. We're going to try to isolate working just into the shoulder blades. Everything else can zip up and relax. Mm -hmm. Let's do two more, whatever you're doing. And then we're going to do bicep curls. So arms down by your side, tucked into your ribs, and curl up. Again, the resistance is where we're working. So resist as you pull up. Even if you're holding a weight, resist that weight. Think of the air pushing it down as you push up. And the rest of the body is in alignment. Feels nice and easy. Just the biceps are working, just the front of the upper arm. Mm -hmm. Way back in the 1980s, I used to work out with a, a cassette tape with Joni Greggins. Um, and it was a, a stationary bicycle workout. And I'd be on my bicycle and she would be talking. And she said this one thing that was just really funny. She said, when the going gets tough, the tough go shopping. And I thought that was pretty funny because retail therapy is something that I do at the thrift store. And then I bring everything back and donate it to the same thrift store and all the money goes to hospice. So it feels all good. <sighs> All right, so now we're going to do triceps. We did the front, now we're going to do the back. That flappy part, 
That's the triceps. So shoulders down and back, body's in alignment, elbows back. The upper arm does not move on this one, just the lower arm moves. And we're going to push back and resist, resist. Nice long neck. The head is like a helium balloon lifting up out of the body. The body is like the string hanging down, zipping up. Just the triceps are working now. Some people get bored with the same thing. You can go one hand and then the other. Still working the triceps. Arms are still in the same kind of a position. All right, let's do two more of those. And let your weights go, let your stretchy band go. Let your arms relax. We're gonna open up the arms. Push out the palms so your fingertips are back behind you. Stretch out the arms. Feel that stretch in your tendons. And then bring the fingertips up. Stretch out. Push the palms out. And then bring the fingertips forward. Press the palms out. And then bring those fingertips down, press the palms out. Now bring the palms in and press the wrist out. Fingertips forward, press the wrist out. Fingertips up, press the wrist out. Oh. And fingertips behind, press the wrist out. Okay, shake out your hands. Hold on to your fingers, interlace them. We'll start making a, a lazy eight or an infinity sign. And then slow it down and go the other way. And then we're gonna lock the fingers or snap the fingers together. And then stop and change the lacing of your fingers and snap a little more. Okay, we're gonna pull the arms back out and then pull your hands back. Just back as far back as they go. Maybe this is as far as they go. Whatever feels right for you and then Hold on to your fingers behind you, interlace your fingers, and point down. And for most people, you'll find that this feels like a stretch in the chest. And just invite in your heart inside that stretch is your heart, your physical heart, your emotional heart center. Invite that heart center to start to open, that you're safe. Your space is safe to open into the space around you, in front of you, to lift and melt. <sighs> and then feel your shoulders, feel the position that your shoulders are in and try and maintain that position as you unlace your fingers and bring your arms back, bring your arms up, and then give yourself a big hug. And hold on to your shoulder blades if you can. Walk your fingers farther in toward your shoulder blades. And then slide your hands down to your elbows. And we're going to start rocking. While we're rocking, what I'd love for you to think about is that inside of our heart space, there are parts of us that have been hidden in the unconscious or subconscious that have been hidden and invite them out now 
often those things that are hidden feel shame or emotions that feel like they're unacceptable. Right now we're going to invite them in for nurturing and for love and for acceptance and for forgiveness. And whatever comes out that we're able to offer, we're going to offer that. And let them come out into this heart space as we bring our elbows a little wider. They're going to remain in the heart space while we stretch into the shoulders a little bit. So take one arm, hold that shoulder down and across. Give it a little extra stretch. And just make sure your knees aren't locking in if you're standing. And then the other side. And then bring your arms back together and come back up into your hug and notice which arm is on top. We're going to open up and switch the arms so the other one is on top. Reach for your shoulder blades. <sighs> Shoulders are going to drop as much as they can. Slide down to your elbows and rock all the parts that are coming into that heart space. We're reaching the elbows farther over and stopping on one side to give your shoulder a stretch. Make sure your knees are staying soft. Notice your breath. I'm going to close my, my door because we've got some machine sweeping the street. <laughs> All right, let's go to the other side. Stretching the shoulder, listening to your body. What does your body really love right now? What kind of a stretch does it want? Where does it want to stop and hang out and be breathed into? And then we're going to bring the arms back and open the arms, open up. And as you come forward this time, you're going to round your back. So you're pushing your belly button to your lower back. Your hips and your shoulders and your head are coming together in the front. And we're going to open up again and still pulling the belly button to the, to the back, though this time we're going to take the hips and the shoulders and the head and pull them to the back. Let's do this a few times of kind of a cat-cow, exhaling as you come forward and hugging yourself. Inhaling as you pull back and stretch out. And we're going to come back to neutral and find a chair that you can sit in. Our next activity is going to be uh, done on a chair. A chair that you can, hopefully, you can reach underneath and hold on to the underneath of your chair. If you can't do that, you can always sit on your hand. So let's start out with our left hand holding on under the chair. And take a moment to come into what I call lengthening and widening. So think of your energetic body running through the midline and lifting up out the spine, up the top of the head, lifting up and pulling up. Boop. And at the same time, it's going down the spine, down through the tailbone and pulling down into the ground, into the earth, being pulled down. So now imagine being pulled in both directions at the same time, kind of like softening taffy. And invite in this lengthening. So remember, you are an energetic body that is much larger than the physical body. We'll invite the physical body to lengthen into this larger, lengthened way of existing. Inviting in the vertebrae to open up. Where there might have been contraction. Maybe there's now a little more space. And also think about the energetic body running through the midline and pulling out and widening. So it's pulling out through the shoulders and through the ribs 
and through the hips and through the side body. And you can also widen from the front and the back of the physical body, pulling out in those directions. So you might think of yourself as a um, an orb of light with a center point that's expanding in all directions. The orb is getting larger. So now while our left hand is holding on to the underneath the chair or under your seat, look to your right, let your chin drop, bring your right hand to the back of your head and as you try to push your head down, your chin down, your head is going to resist your hand. So the back of your head is pushing in an upper back diagonal fashion and pushing, pushing, keep pushing against the hand, pushing, 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 lifting and pushing. And then keeping the right hand where it is, stop the resisting, stop the pushing, and gently guide your chin down, your nose down, looking down. And keep going down, down, down. And then release your hand, release your neck, release your other hand, head forward. And just feel a little bit of what that did. Now we're going to take the right hand and hold on to underneath the chair. Take a few breaths to lengthen. And widen. And expand. Look to the left. Left hand is going to go to the back of the head. Chin is going to drop down, pushing the head against the hand, the top back crown of the head, pushing and resisting against the hand. Keep pushing. Keep resisting. Push up. Push out. Back diagonal. Keep pushing. And then keeping the left hand where it is, stop pushing and gently guide your chin and your nose and your forehead down and down and down. And release the hand, release the head, release the other hand, release the stretch. Gonna cross one leg up and over and just kind of notice this new position. Notice what it does in your hip and invite your hip to let down and relax a little bit. Just bring some extra breath into your hip as if you could breathe right into your hip and open things up. And anything that's in there that feels stuck is being released through the exhale and cleansed in the air and we're breathing in a breath brand new fresh breath. Now the hand that's on the same side as the foot is going to hold on to the ankle. The other hand's going to reach over to the foot and hold on to the foot. And we're going to inhale and lift everything. Lift your physical body, lift your energetic body. Exhale and release. And do that three more times with your own breath. And then just notice when you come back down. Notice where your knee is, if it's a little lower. Notice your hip and how it feels, if it feels a little more relaxed. Say thank you to your leg for responding. Thank you to your hip. Let that leg go and we're going to do the same thing to the other side. 
So starting out with the hip, knowing that the hip is there, knowing that it's affected by this position, and bringing some extra breath into the hip, an invitation to open and release. The hand that's on the same side as the foot is going to hold on to the ankle. Other hand is going to reach over for your foot and hold on. Inhale and lift everything. Exhale and release. Three more times. When you're done, just notice your hip. Notice if your knee is down a little lower, if your hip has relaxed a little. Give your leg and especially your hip kudos for responding to this. Lower your legs, feet on the floor, and we're going to bring the fingers to a tented position with the thumbs on the forehead. Breathe in and out, in through your nose, out through your mouth. On your next inhale, curl your fingers so that your fingertips are on in the middle of your forehead. Press in and pull the skin apart as you exhale. Pull all the way down behind your ears, down your body, and land on your thighs. And take a breath here. Now bring the fingertips back to the middle of the forehead. We're going to open up the third eye. Press in and pull out. And keep doing this all the way up the forehead, all the way to the crown, opening up the crown. All the way to the back of the crown, down the back of the head, opening up the head, opening up the mind, opening up the neck. And then when you get to the shoulders, hang out on your shoulders, just hang down. And then cross the arms, hands rather, over the heart space. And imagine that what's brewing inside the heart space is a seed in a garden. And the seed is some intention or self-affirmations or a prayer or mantra. Something that is affirming, self-accepting, self-loving. And we're going to strengthen the seed and start growing the seed, making a groove in the garden for the seed, connecting the groove to the heart, to the earth, to the energetic field. And start tapping like the rhythm of your heartbeat. Start tapping one side and then the other. Do bilateral stimulation to really land this positive self-affirming mantra or prayer or self-talk. And you are muted. If you want to say something out loud so that you alone can hear it, you can say this out loud. You can say it as if you were the wise self, maybe three lifetimes from now, who is telling you that you are in the right place at the right time. You are kind. You are smart. You are a beautiful being in process. You are in the right place at the right time.
and then land that seed in the garden, in your heart space. Bring it with you as we stand back up. And as it continues to grow, we're now going to rub the hands together and create a portal for anything in you, your physical body, your energetic body, mental body, emotional body, psychic body, anything inside that's ready to be let go of that's saying, yes, I have served you well. I am not serving you well anymore. I am going to go now and let it come into this portal like a little ball, <sighs> create a ball of everything that has served us well. Say thank you for your service as it comes into this ball. Thank you for your service and now break it up into pure light. <sighs> and breathe in these particles of pure light and oxygen. <sighs> breathe in and out of this pure light and oxygen. And bring your hands down to your thighs, tented fingers, feet are at least shoulder width apart, some comfortable distance. And we're going to take the four corners of the feet and open them up. So the pad of your big toe and the pad of your little toe are going to stretch across and away from each other. The two sides of the heel are going to stretch across and all four are going to stretch away from each other. And then we're going to take those and we're going to cable them into the floor and then turn them into roots going down through the floor, down through the foundation of the home that you're in, down through the crust of the earth, down into the earth, into the soil where it's moist and warm, root out to the sides. Just imagine those little fibers coming out of the roots, intermingling with other root systems, with our root systems, with the earth root systems, with the tree root systems, with animal root systems. And feel the joy of everything that's in there that you have arrived and you know that you're part of this connection. They've been waiting for us to remember this. Feel that joy coming back up into the physical body, the energetic body, into the heart space in the garden. Feed the seed with that energy. Feel it growing up and out the crown of your head. Feel the energy in the ethereal or energetic field, the ethereal range where it's light and spacious and open, non-judgmental. True love. Bring that energy, feel that energy, that joyful energy that you're now connecting with it again and remembering. Feel that coming back down into the body, into the seed, into the garden. Feeding the seed in the garden. We're going to breathe in right here. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart space, to namaste, prayer hands. Inhale and connect heaven and earth. So one arm up, one arm down, palm up, palm down, looking up. And when you're ready to exhale, we'll come back to the heart space. Ready to inhale, we'll switch to the other side. And we're going to go back and forth. So we're going to exhale into the heart space. Inhale and connect heaven and earth. Exhale into the heart space. Inhale and connect heaven and earth. And remember your seed is growing and you're bringing in energy and you're growing out. And the next time you're in Namaste, prayer hands, stay right here. And we're going to fold over into a ragdoll. So fold from your hips to your waist. Head is going to head down to the ground. Hips are going to head down to the heavens, head up to the heavens. And right here, it may feel uncomfortable. So make sure your knees are bent so you feel as comfortable as you can. Invite your breath to help you. 
to loosen up and open up and release. And then while staying in this position, let your head drop, don't look up. We're gonna rise up the body just to a shelf so the back is parallel to the floor. And we're gonna lift the chest up and over a wall as we go back down into ragdoll. So inhale up into a shelf, exhale down into ragdoll. Do that a few times. Next time you're in ragdoll, stay right there and hold on to your elbows and invite the weight of your upper body to pull you down a little more. And then change the cross of your arms, holding on to the elbows. And then let go of your arms and let them hang. So your shoulders are rounded, your head is hanging. Nod your head, yes and no, shake your head. And then let your head just hang and feel your neck being pulled, a little bit of traction. Let your arms go, shoulders go, head go, neck stretch. Now pull up just a little, still hanging in ragdoll. Look down at the ground, look at your hands and start drawing a big infinity sign. So you're crossing in the middle and going way out to the side and opening up a circle and draw an infinity sign or a lazy eight and then start rising up your eyes and rise up your infinity sign with your eyes. So you're drawing an infinity sign in front of you and then still look up and bring the infinity sign up above your head and you're opening the energetic field, putting things back in its right order. And we're all doing this work together right now. <sighs> opening up the energy, putting it into its rightful place of being at peace. <sighs> and then bring the back of your hands together and push the energy out, push your hands down so that your fingers land on your thighs again. We're gonna stand in mountain pose. So the feet are grounded, rooted, the knees are soft, the tailbone is reaching down to ground, zipping up the front, shoulders are coming up back and down, palms are now forward. Head is lifted like a helium balloon and the body is the string hanging down. Bring your fingertips to your pubic bone, press in and pull up as you inhale to the lower lip, push your energetic fingers to the back of the throat, lock a key, exhale and throw it away. And we're gonna do this zipping up three more times. And you can do this to the back body. Find the zipper on the bottom of your tailbone and zip up the back. Bring up a hood over the head. Throw it away. And then lastly, one hand, the fingertips are going to press into the navel belly button. The other hand, the fingertips are going to press into the forehead, third eye. Press in and then lift the skin up. And we're going to do a breathing meditation here. Breathing in, light. Breathing out, light. Breathing in, peace. Breathing out, peace. Breathing in and out like a wave.
being the wave in the ocean that we're all in. And as you continue to breathe in and out of the ocean that we're all in, this energetic field, you can release your hands and keep breathing. Bring your heart and your garden with you. And we're going to close with the word namaste, which is an old Sanskrit word. And through the ages, it has come to this meaning that I understand, which is wherever I'm at right now, which feels really peaceful and part of everything and light and in the light. And I am the light and you are the light. And I recognize that you are in this too. I greet you with this knowledge. Namaste. Well, hello again, everyone, and thank you for coming this morning. I'm, I'm really thrilled to be here with you, and thanks, Ami, for hosting. Uh, so I'm going to very briefly introduce myself. Uh, my name is Louise Lugui. I am an Embody Yoga and Yoga Tune-Up uh, teacher, and I also practice uh, Vini Yoga. All these three traditions have in common the study of yoga from the inside out. So rather than achieving a certain pose, we're really trying to feel it and come into it from the inside out. And yoga, when we think yoga, we think often yoga poses, asanas. But there's also a whole other branch of yoga called pranayama, which is prana for breath or life force. Yama, ayama, either breath extension or breath practice, depending on how you look at it. So today we're going to focus a little bit more on that part of yoga, working with the breath. And I wanted to take a minute to acknowledge that we're all together, but in different spaces. So let's start, if you don't mind, Perhaps putting yourself into gallery view, that's something easy for you to do so that we, you can see everyone in the workshop. And if, you, if it's not comfortable or easy, don't worry about it. Just picture all the other participants. And bring your hands up, palms facing your screen. And we're going to chant the universal sound of OM, or whatever sound works for you today directing our energy through the palms of our hands to everyone else here today. So breathe in. Thank you. Welcome again. Welcome to your body, to your breath, to this day. So why I talk about breathing in times of COVID? Well, first of all, the breathing climate of 2020 has been very peculiar, as you all know. There's this COVID pandemic impairing our ability to breathe and for some, our, their ability to live, breath and life being so interconnected. And then we've all had our, our hearts broken by the cries of I can't breathe from George Floyd and from others. But that has led to the introduction of the Breathe Act to find more balanced ways of approaching public safety. 
And then, of course, lately we've had the wildfires in California that have been suffocating people, not just out west, but, you know, impacting the quality of air all the way out here, as we've seen with our hazy skies. Well, I won't talk about the gut-wrenching, breath-sucking impact of watching the electoral, electoral debates, but that's another topic. Anyhow, it's a really important year, I think, to put aside the idea of business as usual. Let's keep going. It's a good time to pause, take a breath, and then carry on. So that's why I'm offering this workshop today, so that we can find simple tools to connect to our breath and support ourselves with our breath. Let's start with a simple exercise that's usually very instinctive. It's sighing. <laughs> but take a deep breath in and then let it stream out with a sigh. <sighs> and once again, breathe in. <sighs> with an audible sound. Audible sigh. Again, breathe in. <sighs> and notice. Notice the effect. Sighing is a simple, instinctive mechanism that allows us to relax our breath, loosen our breathing muscles, and down-regulate our nervous system. So any point in time you feel a little too anxious, <sighs> you can tap into your breathing apparatus. So I'd like to dive in to a little anatomy tour to get sort of the geeky part out of the way first. So I'm going to share my screen and we're going to look at a little anatomy model here. Can everyone see that? You can give me a little thumbs up. Great. And I'm going to start with the simple skeletal structure to notice a simple thing, these neutral curves in our spine. So when we're standing straight and we have good posture, we can allow more breath in more of us, more of the time. But standing straight doesn't necessarily mean ramrod straight there's these beautiful curves that when we maintain and respect these curves that's when our alignment is absolutely effortless we don't have to grip to anything and hold our breath the other thing i want to point out having to do with posture is that of course the air flows in through our nose most of the time sometimes through our mouths and we don't want to have obstructions here so when we have computer neck or texting neck of course, we're impacting the flow of air coming right through the trachea here and into our lungs. Beautiful lungs. So I'm going to backtrack a little bit here and come to our main muscle of respiration, this amazing breathing diaphragm. So this is the part highlighted in yellow here. And my cat has decided to do all manners of acrobatics here, being fairly <laughs> distracting. So I'm hoping that he settles down. Sorry about that. So back to this breathing diaphragm. It means in Greek, the, the origin of the word is partition. And then the Native Americans actually saw the diaphragm as the horizon between heaven and earth heaven being the head and the heart above, and earth being the digestive and reproductive system below. So yes, a partition, sure, but also a great connector, a great connector of everything in our body. First of all, it's the muscle responsible, as I mentioned, for 75% of our respiratory function. And then you can see here, there's these little tails or crura that come right on down to our spine. So this big breathing muscle is connected to our spine. Interesting, it's not hanging out loose. 
And then if we add the digestive system, the respiratory system, we can see that the diaphragm is connected to this big envelope that keeps all our digestive system together, the peritoneum below, and above the pleural sacs that envelop our lungs, sitting right here on the diaphragm below. So all this is very interconnected. And then if we add some more muscles, oops, I meant to add them, not take them away. We can see here that there's these big muscles in the front connecting the legs to the upper body that also share fascial connections with the diaphragm in the front, connecting legs to the trunk. In the back, we have the quadratus lumborum, connecting the ribs to the hips, also sharing fascial connections with the diaphragm. So everything is connected here in this central place, the solar plexus in the center of us, where the upper body is connected to the lower body. So next, I'm going to go back to our breathing diaphragm mainly, and I'm going to add our circulatory system. So the, the origin of the diaphragm is all around our rib cage, and then the insertion is everything comes together at a place called the central tendon, which is this whole white area at the center of the diaphragm. And amazingly, what sits right there on top of your central tendon, your heart, right back here, there's your heart, and it sits on the diaphragm, and it gets a nice little massage with each breath. So there's that very intimate connection, breath and circulatory system. Also, there's a very, very strong connection with your kidneys sitting right there in the back, going for a ride up and down, up and down, like a little elevator with each breath. Amazing. So I'm going to close up here, going back to the respiratory system, just so that you get a sense with these, it's a two dome shaped muscle, this diaphragm, that actually takes up quite a bit of space underneath your rib cage. So, so this part, it's not hollow. You have the liver on the right hand side, you have other organs on the left. It's not hollow, but it means that more of your lung capacity is really out in the sides and in the back of you. Notice all this lung capacity in the back of you, which is why COVID patients have been placed on their bellies because it's been found that they can access more breath in their backs when they're on their bellies. And last, notice just how high up the lungs come all the way to your first rib. Wow, who knew you had lungs all the way up here? Amazing. So we want the jaw, the neck, you know, the shoulders to be released, relaxed, so that we're not constricting our breathing capacity up here. So I'm gonna stop sharing now so that we can work on finding all of this in our bodies. But before we do that, I'm gonna share one more thing with you, which is a little detour through the nervous system, which is also part of our anatomy. You can see this screen now. Let me actually go to the full screen. Can you see this slide on the nervous system? Thank you. Okay, so just a brief detour through the nervous system. We have a somatic branch, which innervates the skeletal muscles. Well, tra tracking back, I'm not gonna talk about too much of it. There's the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. We're gonna focus on, so central nervous system, brain, spine, peripheral nervous system, everything else. The somatic branch innervates the skeletal muscles the autonomic branch governs the internal organ like the heart and the lungs, the heart here, the lungs here. And the diaphragm is innervated by both the somatic and the autonomic branch, once again, connecting everything. And in this autonomic nervous system branch that functions on autopilot, as the name might imply, you have two main branches. 
the sympathetic nervous system, which is what we think of as fight or flight or feed and breed that gets you up and going. It's not a bad thing, but it's also where you reside when you're very anxious and stressed out. And then on the other side, you have the parasympathetic nervous system, the other branch, which is where you rest, relax, repair, you initiate the relaxation response. Great. I mean, you, you don't want to be down there all the time either. Both branches are good. Either one is good or bad. But the interesting thing is that they cannot both function at the same time. It's either or. You're either on or you're off. <laughs> and amazingly, you can switch one or the other on or off with your breath. So that's why we're talking here about the nervous system. So I'm going to stop sharing again and we're going to come into, sorry, I'm just getting out of this. We're going to come into a little embodied anatomy. So if you're sitting, if you feel like standing up, this is a good time to get into our bodies. Now you have an image of where and how your respiratory system functions. So we're going to start with a little tapping. I'm sure you're familiar with that from your work without me. With loose fists or fingertips or even palms, just tap your chest around the collarbones, the top of your chest, allowing your breath to be smooth and relaxed. And then come to the sides of your chest. Tapping with whichever part of your hand is comfortable for you to get up. Coming down to the origins of your diaphragm and your lower front ribs. Coming back to your breastbone, your sternum, that little handle that you can use to lift yourself up for better posture. And then come on down to your lower back ribs, the origins of your diaphragm and your around there. And then make your way up to the back of your shoulders, tapping yourselves on the back of your shoulders. And then back around to the front of your shoulders working your way up your neck, gently tapping, releasing any tension in the neck. And come to your jaw. Oh, the jaw muscle. It does all sorts of wonderful things for us. You can chew, talk, laugh, but sometimes it's on overdrive. And then ending with the skull, like the gentle rain today, tapping gently on our skull, releasing our mind, relaxing our mind. And let that go and come to standing, noticing the effect of the tapping. We've just woken up our sensory organs, increased circulation in this respiratory system area and the body talks to us in the language of the senses so uh, listen up what do you hear ah sensations hello good we're going to continue with a little exercise to relax the jaw and for this you're going to hold on to your jawbone with your fingertips and with each inhalation you're in this instance going to inhale through your mouth allowing the flow of air to come right down to your heart. And on the inhalation, as you open your mouth, you're going to hold your jaw in place as you just lift your skull off of your jaw, stretching a little bit that jaw muscle. So coming together, hold on to your jaw. Inhale. Exhale, close your mouth back. Inhale, holding onto your jaw. As you lift the skull right off the jaw. Exhale, close your mouth. One more time. Inhale, 
Breathing in through your mouth, lifting your skull off your jaw, stretching your masseter muscle. And then letting that go, giving your little more massage, noticing any release and tension in the jaw. And then we're going to come to our shoulders, making nice big shoulder rolls, whatever is comfortable. They can be actually small circles, big circles, small, small circles. What does your body need today? We're going to mainly roll the shoulders forward and back, inhaling front, exhaling back. And picture your scapula, your shoulder blades as big bars of soap gliding on the back of your rib cage. If we can truly differentiate our shoulder blades from our rib cage, we can free up the rib cage. And then shrug your shoulders all the way up to your ears. Take a big breath in, expanding the chest and then just release your shoulders onto the whole chest structure. Ah, there's a place for your shoulders to go and be supported. So now your shoulders can be loose. Your neck is free, yay! And you can breathe into more of you. Jaw, shoulders. Let's come to the lungs. And for this, I have a little tool, which is this natural sponge. Can you all see this? Natural sponge. And it has this amazing ability to contract, expand, just like the lungs. It has a special affinity for moisture. And I'd like you to think for a minute of your lungs as these big sponges, as they expand when they fill with air and they get squeezed like a sponge expelling the air or the water out on the exhalation and this is a useful image images are useful to work with your body in general and i find this image particularly useful for the lungs because the lungs really have an affinity for humidity for moisture think of a dried up brittle sponge you break off Similarly, your lungs would not be happy in very dry winter air with no moisture. So it's a very good practice, especially during flu season, COVID season, to sip, and I don't mean gulp, but just to sip hot water or herbal tea throughout the day. Make sure that you have this humid, lovely, supportive environment for your spongy lungs. So let's work with the spongy lungs. Place your fingertips on your shoulders. That's gonna be your inhalation. On your exhalation, you're gonna bring your shoulders together as you exhale with a ha sound, expelling the air out of your lungs as if you were squeezing water out of a sponge. Inhale, fill with breath. Exhale, ha. <sighs> Inhale, open. Fill with air. Exhale. Ha! Squeezing it out. Inhale. Spongy lungs. Ha! 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 Engaging your lower belly muscles too. They're part of this party. Inhale. Exhale. Ha! Ha! Good. Release your arms down. Notice. Hello, spongy lungs. And next we're going to come down to the breathing diaphragm. So we are going to model this with our hands and arms. There are two domes. You can bring your fingertips together, making little domes with your hands. And amazingly, what happens on the inhale is the diaphragm actually goes down and flattens out. Inhale, exhale, it releases up, floating up like a little jellyfish. So inhale, down and out. Exhale, releasing up and in. Inhale, down and out. 
Exhale, release, floating up and in, relaxing the diaphragm. And you can keep doing this if you'd like for a few more breaths as I continue to explain the mechanism of breathing. So, okay, your diaphragm goes down, out. All of a sudden, your lungs have all extra space. So they are decompressed, depressurized, and because of the pressure differential, the outside there comes rushing in. So in fact, you're not pulling your breath in, you're being breathed. The air flows in, the air flows out out. Flows in and it flows out. I apologize, my cat is loud. <laughs> I hope he's not too distracting. I don't want to interrupt and let him go out because he can wait. So let's play next with our diaphragm a little longer. We're going to give special attention today. We're going to pretend our diaphragm is a little accordion. So you can place your hands on either sides of your ribs, thumbs facing back. If this is very uncomfortable and you have a scarf or a belt nearby, you can use that around your lower ribs. But if you don't have anything handy and it's not comfortable, you can just imagine your hands here. No big deal. So on the inhalation, we're going to exhale into our hands while resisting a little bit with our hands. Oh, trying to feel this big muscle working under our hands. Exhale, squeeze your rib cage together like a little accordion. <sighs> Inhale, opening the accordion to your sides, pressing into your hands, resisting this opening with your hands, pressing the ribs into your hands, and then pressing your hands into your ribs on the exhale. Ribs into hands on the inhale, moving down and out with this diaphragm muscle, and then exhaling, pressing hands into ribs. So we don't usually feel this diaphragm except when we have the hiccups. <laughs> so that's not always easy to, to feel. Where is this muscle? But it's, you know, arguably one of your most important muscle in your body. And as we talked before, it's not in isolation. We have the heart sitting here on the central tendon. So let's acknowledge that by placing one hand on your heart or both hands. Take a moment to feel the beating of your heart underneath your hands and the warmth of your hands on your heart. And then if you choose, repeat, my heart is strong, my heart is open, knowing that your heart is fully supported by your breath, by the massaging of the breathing diaphragm, by the lovely pillowy surrounding of your lungs. So it's actually okay to open your heart and try this gently, opening your front body, lifting your gaze to where the wall meets the ceiling, knowing that your heart is just falling back into this lovely pillow of the lungs. And if it's comfortable for you, you can even open your arms out to your sides, knowing it's okay, my heart is open, my heart is supported by my lungs. So we spend a great deal of time hunched over in our lives, over our texting or computers or driving. So this simple practice of opening our front body without chucking our occiputs in our neck where we're cutting off major nerves here. We wanna keep the length in our back as we open our fronts so that we can allow the breath to travel through more of us. So we've acknowledged the heart and that amazing connection of the heart and the lungs working together to deliver oxygen through the blood vessels to every cell in the body and removing carbon dioxide, which is the other side of this equation. So now let's talk to the kidneys. We talked about them a little bit earlier. If comfortable for you, bring your hands 
to your lower back ribs, or you can just, again, picture your hands here. And notice that when you inhale, your kidneys are doing what? They are going down. Little elevator ride down on the inhale. Little elevator ride up on the exhale. Hello, kidneys. Kidneys, diaphragm, all connected. Coming down with the inhalation, riding up with the exhalation. Keep doing a few more breaths at your own pace. And just an interesting factoid here, your kidneys move about a couple of inch with each breath cycle. We take anywhere between 15 and 30,000 breaths a day, meaning your lovely kidneys are going for a huge excursion of two thirds to three quarters of a mile per day. So I always think you should get them a new pair of sneakers. <laughs> but the, really, the sneakers are Drink your water, drink your water, your kidneys need it, and they're jogging all day long, so they need the water. Okay, so we've talked about the anatomy, we felt it in our body. Now let's use our mind to connect with our body. We're gonna do a couple of breath-centered meditation. The first one being a standing meditation with the posture. And the second one will be a sitting meditation. But at any point in time, you can feel free to sit back down if something is not comfortable for you. And if you choose, you can select a mindset or an intention for this practice to bring in your mind into the picture. Or I am offering a simple one today. My breath is my teacher. My breath is my teacher. And that is a reminder that at any point in time, something is not working for you, any movement is not working for you, or a movement is going too fast or too slow, and it's not in sync with your breath today, you follow your breath, which is your teacher. I'm merely here as your assistant teacher. So feel free to modify or skip out altogether at any point in time. So we're gonna start standing about hip width apart. I'm gonna to move to my side so you can see all of me. And we're gonna play with the Goldilocks principle of something just right. But before we get to the just right part, we're gonna exaggerate a little bit and we're gonna shift forward from our ankles like a you know, ski jumper. And then we're gonna move back, rocking from the ankles all the way back. And notice what happens when you shift too far forward, your whole back body is gripping. And then when you shift too far back, your whole front body is gripping. So we don't want to be gripping, we want free, smooth breath in a relaxed body. So work your way to a smaller rocking forward and back until you find the place that is just right for you in your body today centered right over the arches of your feet and that's the first little dome that we're going to be stacking today and then moving up to your pelvic floor diaphragm that next big one Tilt your pelvic back, lifting your tailbone, and then tuck your tailbone under, exaggerating the movement. Notice what this does to your breath. This is a common posture and I'm exaggerating, of course. But notice what's happening to my windpipe, what's happening to my chest, my lung capacity, what's happening to my abdominal muscles that help me exhale when I'm standing like this. So you don't want to have your pelvis tucked too far forward, nor do you want to have it tucked, lifting way back. You want to have your tail down and back like a big heavy dinosaur tail. So let your tail be heavy. 
and allow your pelvic floor diaphragm to stack nicely right over the arches of your feet. And when you found that place, we're going to move up to the next big diaphragm. Which one is that? Ah, yes, our breathing diaphragm. I have my fingers here, my hands here, but feel free to keep your hands, your arms loose on your sides. Here we're going to flare our chest forward, keeping everything down where it was nicely stacked, and then hunch the chest back, moving forward of center, back of center, noticing how that in impacts our ability to breathe or even to talk while you're doing this. And then again, find the place that's right at the center of you where your breathing diaphragm is stacked over your pelvic floor diaphragm over the arches of your feet. And last, we're going to come to either the vocal cord diaphragm in your throat or the soft palate in your mouth a nice lovely little dome or the top of your crown, whichever works for you. Shifting the head forward. Does that feel familiar to you, anyone? How does that impact your breathing? And then shift it far back. Oh, I can hear it even impacting my voice. Too far back for sure. That one's too back. That one's too forward. And this one is just right. So whenever you feel that you have neatly stacked the domes in your body, that you find the center of you today, just abide here in this effortless place where you've balanced effort and effortlessness. You can do any micro movement at any time that you need to to continue to be comfortable here. As Ami would say, think of your head as a helium balloon lifting up and your body trailing down. If it's helpful for you, think of the crown of your head connected to the North Star all the way in the universe. And think of the soles of your feet rooted down all the way to the core of the earth, connecting all of you all around. There's more of you than meets the eye. Good. Release that standing meditation. And if you have a chair nearby, hopefully, and I forgot to mention that at the beginning, so apologize. But hopefully you have a chair. If not, you can do this standing as well. Coming onto the edge of your chair so that you can find that alignment here too. So we're not going to sit in our chair in hunch asana, a familiar posture for many of us, nor are we going to flail ourselves forward and chuck our occiput in our neck. Again, here we want to find the place that's just right for us. The occiput is up and back. Ears, over armpits, over hips. So you found your posture first and then continue in this position as I will talk you through a meditation which I call do nothing and breathe. <laughs> so do nothing but breathing. Ha <laughs> ha. So you found your breath. Feel free to close your eyes or simply soften your gaze. Make sure that your feet are connected to the ground. And relax your jaw, your shoulders, relax your belly, relax any gripping that's not serving you right now. Settling in with your breath. Place one hand on your chest and one hand on your belly. And follow your breath. 
taking inventory, checking in. Where is your breath at today? What is the quality of your breath? Where is your breath? Is it in your nostrils, on the edges of your nostrils? Is it under the hand in your chest? Is it under your belly? Where is it? Don't rush to the next inhale or hold on to the last exhale. Just enjoy this breath. Enjoy this moment. Continue to simply follow each breath, each breath in, each breath out, simply knowing that you are breathing. Know that you will breathe anyway. You're just feeling it now. Stay with your breath. If a thought arises, just call it out thought and let it go and return to breath. And when you're breathing in, be aware that you're breathing in. you're breathing out, be aware that you're breathing out. And as your breath perhaps becomes a little bit more relaxed and comfortable, allow your chest to expand first a little bit more, then travel into the belly. And on the exhalation, engage your lower belly first and then Release your chest. Breathing in, chest, belly. Breathing out, belly, chest. With no straining, allowing the inhalation to be smooth, flow in, and the exhalation smooth, flow out. At any point in time, feel free to release your hands into your lap, letting go, continuing to stay with your breath. No need to pull, no need to push, knowing you are being breathed. If your mind wanders, think of it as a little radio playing in the background and it's okay. It's okay for the radio to be playing. You don't have to pay attention to it. Return your attention to your breath. Doing nothing but breathing. And then gently allow your eyes to open up again if they were closed taking stock of any sensation, any changes in your body, changes in your mind, changes in your sensations, emotions. Notice what happens when you do nothing, but simply pay attention to the breath. Conscious breathing is a very immediate, simple, accessible way of down regulating our nervous system. In other words, calming ourselves down. And also I wanted to mention here, we've done a couple of breath centered meditation. And I, I wanted to note that for a lot of people in times with COVID all this year during this pandemic, isolation has been tremendously challenging. But as, as the diaphragm connects everything in our body and everything works together and we are more than our just physical body, so we share everything and we are connected intimately in this planet through our breathing because each time we breathe in, we breathe in millions of atoms 
but there's only a finite number of atoms on the planet, which means there's been a long standing tradition of atom recycling. So all the atoms I'm breathing in right now, you might be breathing in tomorrow. And in that way, we're very intimately linked and we're really not alone, not so alone because we have these atoms connecting us together through our breath. So with no logical segue, we're gonna move <laughs> into our last section here of breath and movement. Because our breath moves through all of us, like this little Hoberman sphere can illustrate so well. When we breathe in, we actually breathe in through all of us at the same time. And then we breathe out, everything comes in together. Democratic body or full body breathing. Breathing in, breathing out. So we want to work with that, experiment a little bit in our bodies with movement. First, we're going to start with a little energizing breath, the breath of joy, because this is the more active part, but nothing too crazy, no worries. <laughs> and then we're going to move with the, the simple basic movements of the spine. The key focus here is to remember your sankalpa or your mindset from the previous section. My breath is my teacher. So the important thing we want to practice here is matching our movement to our breath, your very own movement to your very own breath. So if your chair is still in the way, take it out of the way because for this first breath, which you can also do sitting, you're going to need to be able to move your arms out to the side. So make sure you have enough room for that without knocking anything over. And this breath of joy, which is a variation of Bastrika breath or bellows breath, is a little bit energizing. We're going to inhale in three parts. The first third of our lung capacity, we're going to bring our arms up in front of us, palms facing down. The second third, we're going to bring our arms out to the sides, palm facing forward. And the last third, we're going to bring our arms above head as far as comfortable for you today, our palms facing each other, which you can't see here in my video. So first third, arms up in the front, second third, arms out to the side, third, third, arms up above, and then the exhale is going to be the arms down in front as you bend forward with loose knees and exhale again with a hot sound. So let's try this together. In, in to the sides, in, up, out, ha, up, out, up, ha, front, side, up, ha, front, side, up, ha, in, 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 out, in, 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 out, and feel free to go as fast or as slow, as good in your body today. What is good for you today? You don't want to hyperventilate, you don't want to exhaust yourself, but you want to lift your energy up a little bit here with this movement in, 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 and out. And on the exhale, feel free to release out anything that's not serving you today. Just dump it out <laughs> together with your exhalation. One last time, in, 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 and ha, out. Good. And stand here, noticing the effect. All the cells lit up through your body. Hello. Woo. What happened here? Oh, you turned on your sympathetic nervous system, didn't you? <laughs> or maybe some of you, maybe you notice you're a little bit more awake. So next we're going to move into the movements, the direction of movements of the spine, starting with a standing or sitting cat cow. On the exhalation, we're gonna hug ourselves with alternating arms, right arm on top, and simply curve your spine in as if you're going into a fetal position, just to the beginning of this spinal flexion. 
that's going to be your exhalation. And on the inhalation, we're going to open up the front body, extending the spine. Again, not chucking the skull in the back of your neck, not lifting your tail all the way up. Find nice length into your spine as you extend the arms open. That's your inhalation. Exhalation, left arm on top. Just come to the beginning of your stretch. Inhale, open the arms out. Exhale into flexion, right arm on top. Inhale, matching your movement to your breath. How fast, how slow does your breath want to do this movement today? And just enjoying the sensations of breathing in with an open, extended spine and using the whole spinal flexion to help you squeeze out your exhalation. Continue at your own pace a couple more times. And then we're going to move into the lateral flexion. So come back to standing. About feet, about hip width apart. And for this lateral flexion, you're going to lift your left arm up. And as you lift your left arm up on the inhalation, you're going to root down into your left foot. So we're not cheating here. We're not doing this up when the shoulder, lifting the shoulder to our ear. The shoulder is nice and gliding down our rib cage. The lateral opening on the exhalation is just going to be at the beginning of this lateral bending because we don't want to collapse here and create all sorts of imbalances we want to find length and opening in our whole side body lifted by the buoyant lung as if it were blowing out like a balloon okay so if you want to join me now inhale your left arm up rooting down into your left foot Exhale, just to the beginning of a bending to the right. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, you can place your right hand on your chest, your waist, your belly, just for support as you open up your whole left side. And feel free to come back and forth, inhaling long, exhaling to the side. Or you can stay here in a little side bend, just feeling the opening, the expansion of your whole side body. Or a breath or two. Come back to center and float your arm down. Noticing any differences from one side to the other. And then lift your right arm up, rooting into the right foot. Inhale. Exhale, just to the beginning of a side bend, making sure you're staying in this side plane like if you were stuck between two panes of glass, so we're not moving forward or back. And we're continuing matching your movement to your breath. You can exhale the arm all the way down or only come back to center, inhaling long foot to fingertips, exhaling just to the beginning of your side bend as you open up the side body your right lung now is filling with a little bit more air and is supported by the other side not collapsing feel free to come in and out with your breath or stay for a breath or two finding the length and the whole side of you and then release your arm down, let it float. Noticing the effect in your breath. In your side bodies now awakened. And we're, we've done flexion extension, sideways, four movements. 
let's go into spinal rotation, empty coat sleeve rotation. So think of the crown of your head all the way down to your feet. There's a, a nice central axis and we're just rotating loosely around this axis, lifting our heels up so that we're not gripping and we're allowing the arms to just float out going along for the ride like empty coat sleeves. That's spinal rotation. So the more we can move our body in all directions, the more breath we can find in more of us more of the time, which is actually one of the definitions of yoga, finding breath in more of us more of the time. And we'll just do a little wink to our friends, the lungs and the kidneys. If you'd like, you can bring your front hand up to the lung point right where the arm meets the chest and your back arm to the kidneys as you flop your arms around. These are acupuncture points, lungs, kidneys, little activation here and then slow that movement back down and come back to center. I'm adding two more movements to the spine, which are not so commonly talked about, but we have compression and axial extension. We do compression every day with gravity, so we're not going to do that here, but let's try a little axial extension. Lift your arms up with an inhalation, come up if comfortable on the balls of your feet. Exhale, just your heels down. Take one more inhalation, finding length from your waist up and from your waist down, and then release your arms down. So again, our central, our solar plexus here is where everything comes together, upper body, lower body, our horizon. So the more space we have through here, the better everything will function. So move. Use imagery, and we're going to close with a balancing breath called Nadi Shodhana, or alternate nostril breathing. For this breath, we're going to form the Vishnu Mudra by just bending the index and third finger, if comfortable, and if not, just have your thumb and little finger out. Bring your thumb to your right nostril. You can close the nostril or just close the opening. Inhale through the left nostril. Close your left nostril with your pinky or ring finger. Exhale out the right. Inhale up the right nostril. Close the right nostril. Exhale out the left. Inhale left. When you're full of breath, close the nostrils, switch sides, exhale out the other side. Inhale right. Full of breath, close the right, exhale left. Inhale left. When you're full of breath, switch, exhale right. Keep going at your own pace. When you're full of breath, switch. And if you find that you're dropping your head forward, you can hold on to your elbow with the other hand, or you can place a hand on your sacrum. And then eventually you're gonna close out with your last exhalation on the left side. And I've done a very, very short breath balancing exercise, but this is a very, very useful tool to do as many as 30 breath cycles to balance the nervous system, to balance the two hemispheres of the brain. It's, it's a really great tool. So I encourage you to do this at home, actually. You know how they say, don't try this at home. I say, try this at home. <laughs> and I'm going to leave you with a quick quote from Edgar Tolle, which is as follows. Being aware of the breath forces you into the present moment, which is the key to all inner transformation. So whenever you're conscious of the breath, 
you are present. You may notice, you may have noticed this, that when you have your thinking mind on, it's different than when you have that observer mind on. And you can't really think and be aware of your breathing at the same time. Conscious breathing actually stops the mind. But it's not like being in a trance or being asleep. You're fully aware, and awake, awake and alert. You're not falling below your thinking, but you're rising above it. If you look more closely, you will find that those two things, coming fully into the present and ceasing that loud thinking without loss of consciousness, it's actually one and the same thing. It's the arising space of consciousness. Cool. So is that. Thank you, Edgar Toll. Bring your hands together and we're going to chant Om to close. Take a deep breath in. Um, so hi everyone, I'm so happy to be here and to be part of this, even though this is fairly early for me. <laughs> um, but I'm so happy to be a part of this fundraiser. And um, yeah, I am used to doing Zoom Pilates. So, and I'm now a certified yoga instructor. So I thought it'd be fun to do a blend of Pilates and yoga. And we're gonna be on the floor because mostly because my screen, um, you won't be able to see my whole body if I'm standing. So we're gonna be on the floor today. So this will be a little different probably than what you're used to. As far as the movement, there won't be the aerobic part <laughs> or the, you know, getting the blood circulating part so much. But um, yeah, so we'll, we will um, continue. But first I was wondering if you have um, a need for um, extra padding for your knees, if you have a hard floor, for instance, I'm on carpet, or if you need extra padding for your wrists, if you're on your all fours or on your knees. Hi. <laughs> uh, so if you do, if you do need extra padding, and you can also roll up your mat, you know, you can fold it and add extra padding for your wrists or for your knees that way. So just to be aware if you need that, and also if you like a bolster or a folded up blanket, maybe if you can have that available, especially for sitting if you, if you need that um, to sit on, to, you know, to sit comfortably. So, so with that being said, we'll go ahead and start and hopefully um, you can hear me okay. I'm going to try to project my voice enough I don't have a Bluetooth. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and start and um, just find yourself comfortably sitting on your mat. So whatever that is for you. Yeah. And just to ground in and center into this, this day that we're in, right? This new day. So start to breathe nice and deep and even and allow your breath to be full and even, right? So inhaling, whether you inhale in and, and exhale out the nose or inhale in the nose and exhale out the mouth, whatever feels right for you. But allow the belly to relax, allow the spine to be long and the breathing to be nice and regular and even and deep so that we bring our parasympathetic nervous system on board here. Just notice whatever you notice in your body as you follow your breath through your body. Perhaps you wanna add a little mula bandha, right? So as the breath comes down into the belly, perhaps you might want to engage the perineum and acting like sort of like a little trampoline, just lifting from the perineum to push the breath back up and out. Connecting, connecting the inhale 
that goes all the way down with the exhale. And as we go through this hour, always connecting back in with the breath and checking in to make sure that your breath is connected to your movement. I'll mention that from time to time. And now we're going to um, take a position if it's available to you that, um, or you can continue to sit cross-legged. This is called mermaid. So I may have to adjust my screen from time to time. <laughs> so mermaid is simply sitting with one leg folded back and this leg folded in front. Right? And mermaid um, is a Pilates position. Your toes are laying down and back. If this is not comfortable, you can sit cross-legged. And just allow your hip and your pelvis to sort of melt into the mat and relax as your spine lifts. And then we're going to do a twist in this position. So bringing your opposite hand to the forward knee, the knee that's forward, and your other hand behind you, lengthen your spine as you inhale, and then just gently pulling into a twist on your exhale and looking back over your shoulder. And just take a breath here. And then we'll come back to center and we'll go the other way. So other hand to the that leg and your same side hand behind you, lengthening your spine and exhaling. And then returning to the center, we're gonna do a little side bend stretch. So bringing your arm toward your ear and reaching out as you lean into that stretch, pressing your hip down as you reach your arm. And then lifting up and going to the other side, arm by the ear as we reach. And then we'll go side to side a few times, just like seaweed in the ocean, right? So we lift up and then we side bend and we lift tall and we side bend. Feel like seaweed in the ocean with your spine laterally, bending laterally, nice and flowy, right? And breathing. And then when we come back to the top, we'll switch sides, letting our hands come behind us to bring our legs around to the other side. Or if you're sitting cross-legged, maybe you wanna change so that your other leg is on top. And we'll let our hip relax into the mat, lift our spine here. If your hip goes all the way down, great. It may not, that's okay, right? Just try to relax and let that hip open. And then we'll take a twist here. So bringing your hand to that forward knee, other hand behind you, lengthening, and then bringing yourself into a twist. Keeping our spine on the same axis. So we're not going to lean back, right? We're just straight up. Good. And then we'll come back to facing forward and take it to the other side. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, twist. Feel like you're wringing your torso out. And coming back to center, taking that side bend stretch. As we reach our arm by our ear, we're pressing our hip down, stretching the side, and then lifting, taking it to the other side as you reach directly overhead, and then a little seaweed motion, right? Allowing your spine to maybe do a little bit of a and the curvy thing, right? As you go side to side and lifting and swaying. The arms are part of the seaweed. Your spine is part of the seaweed. Yeah. 
and then we're coming back to center and we'll bring our hands behind us to lean back and bring our legs in front of us into a uh, um, butterfly sort of pose. So your feet are together, soles of your feet together. You can use your hands behind you if you need to, to press your pelvis forward with your back flat. Right? And then bringing our hands forward. And we're going to just allow our back to stay flat to begin with. So you put the pelvis forward and then maybe you want to round over your legs, maybe not. And you can also press your thumbs into the arch of your feet, right sort of in the center of the arch where the kidney point is. Right? If you want to just sort of stimulate that meridian as you breathe here. You could even massage your feet, kind of massage around if you like. Yeah. Letting the knees, letting the hips open. And then lifting up. And we're going to bring ourselves around to our mat this way. And have your hands behind your legs. I'm going to, oops, sorry, I have to keep adjusting my screen. Um, so we're going to do sort of a sitting cat cow. But we'll think of our feet as being the engine that moves our body. So in other words, you're going to use your feet on the mat to sort of pull yourself forward, lifting your, your heart, drawing your shoulders down on your inhale, and then sort of pressing with your feet as you curl your tailbone under and round your back. And then pulling with the feet as we lift up and we arch on the inhale. Nice deep breath, and then pressing with the feet as we round without dropping the head, right? You don't want to drop the head. The head stays in line with the spine. Like a wave, our spine is like a wave here, right? Feeling your feet, sort of moving the bones, right? Good. And then letting that, letting that movement, next time we exhale, letting that push, go ahead and slowly roll you onto your back. And you can climb up your legs if you want. You can release and go slowly down, elongating our spine. And when we come all the way to the, our mat, I'm scooching down. <laughs> Bring your feet in so that they're in line with your sits bones. So your heels are in line with your sits bones. And doing that same movement with your feet, you're going to sort of gently pull with the feet to let your tailbone arch down. And then as you press with your feet, your tailbone curls up. Right? And you're going to breathe here like the same wave-like motion, propelling with the feet. Right? So inhaling as the tailbone tilts down and letting your spine relax, pressing with your feet to exhale. Inhale, pull. Exhale, press. Think of moving the bones using your feet. Yeah. And the next time we exhale, we're breathing nice and deep and full. Next time we exhale, we're going to continue curling up off the mat. So we're going to peel our spine off the mat up into a bridge with your hips pressing up and your shoulder blades sort of reaching into the mat here, adjusting the feet as necessary. And take a couple of breaths in bridge. Nice deep breath. Good. And then on our next exhale, we hold our hips up as we let our spine melt all the way down, right? Articulating the spine down until the hips come down last, and then widen your feet so they're more into the, about the width of your mat, turning your heels in slightly so that the knees line up over the second toe, right? You want that alignment. So a wide-legged bridge. We're going to inhale, pull with the feet. Exhale, press, and peel your spine off the mat. You can sort of imagine that you have one of those big exercise balls between your knees 
and you're giving it just a little squeeze here as you press your hips up, right? And breathe. We're reaching our shoulders into the mat as we press up. Good. And then next exhale, again, allowing your hips to stay up until the end, melting your spine all the way down. And then when our hips come down, we're gonna bring our legs together as close as they'll go. So your, I'm scooching. <laughs> so your ankles and knees and everything together if you're able to, right? As close as they'll go. Good, and inhale. As we exhale, we're gonna try to squeeze our thighs together and peel off the mat. So you're gently squeezing those legs together from the top of your thigh. And coming into our bridge here, Keep that little squeeze going, right? And take a breath. And then next exhale, melting our spine down all the way. Good, relax your hips, keep your legs together. Slide your arms along the floor so that they're reaching over your head, sort of stretching your fingertips away from your torso, reaching. And then bending our elbows, we'll clasp our hands behind our head. And we have our elbows out our peripheral vision. So sort of lengthen and lift them and support your head with your hands. And inhale. As we exhale, we're gonna squeeze our thighs together just a little bit as we press our head and shoulders up. And then we're gonna to inhale to lie back down. Nice full breath, exhale, squeeze the thighs together and press your head and shoulders, pressing your rib cage into the mat to lift, not pulling, right? Inhale to lie back down. Nice deep breath. And this time we're gonna exhale, we're gonna squeeze our thighs together and we're going to turn our heart to the left, right? So as we come up, we're just gonna rotate a little bit, come back to center and inhale, lie back down. Exhale, we're gonna press up and turn our heart to the right. Elbows stay wide. Coming back to center and relaxing down on your inhale. Pressing up on your exhale as you squeeze your thighs and turn your heart to the left. Good, and back to center. Lie back down, nice deep breath. Exhaling, squeeze and turn our heart to the right. Coming back to center and lie back down and relax. Keeping our hands here, we're just gonna let our legs sway over to one side and however you're comfortable, just let your knees kind of hang there, whatever's comfortable for your back and relax your legs here and then lift them up and sway them the other way. Just a little sway, keeping our shoulders on the ground. Yeah. Good. And then lifting the legs up. Good, keep the legs, actually bring your legs a little bit farther apart so they're more in line with your hips and reach your arms to the ceiling, palms facing each other, shoulders relaxed, right? And we're gonna lift our arms like we're trying to touch the ceiling. So kind of reaching your fingertips, opening up your back, right? Reach, reach, and then drop your shoulders and relax them. So on the inhale, we're gonna be in this position. And then as we exhale, we're gonna draw our rib cage down and or our shoulder blades down and reach our arms back, maybe 45 degrees. Don't go too far. So you wanna see your arms out your peripheral vision and then bring your arms back up on your inhale. So this is a core connection exercise, right? So as we exhale, our rib cage draws down, our shoulder blades draw down, our arms reach away from our torso. Good. And then we inhale back to the top. Now we're gonna to add to this. So one at a time, bring your legs up into a tabletop position which simply means your knees are over your hips like that, right? Good, and sort of gently press your back into the mat to engage your core here so you feel stable. 
Now, as we inhale, we're gonna be in this position. As we exhale, we're gonna reach our arms back, drawing our rib cage down, extending our right leg. So just unbend that right leg. So it's at an angle. You're pressing your back into the mat. Good, inhale everything back to center. And then as you exhale, extending the left leg, pulling the rib cage down, reaching your arms back. Feeling your back on the mat, good. Continue that movement. Don't let your leg go too low. You wanna keep your spine imprinting into the mat. Good, reaching out on your exhale, inhaling back. Good. We wanna feel that connection from our core, reaching through our extremities, right? Reaching through the arms, reaching through the legs. Good. And then we'll try both legs, right? So as we reach our arms back, extend both legs. Good, inhale back. And again, make sure your mat, your back is pressing into the mat. Press into the mat as you reach out. Good, one more. Nice deep breath. Right. Reaching out as you pull that rib cage down. Good. And then when you come back to the top, take a little moment to relax your body by hugging your knees. Rocking around. You always have to relax. Relaxation is very important. <laughs> and then we're gonna bring our legs into the tabletop position and we're gonna place our hands right against our thighs like this with our arms straight. So in other words, you've got this wall sort of with your legs here and you're not gonna let your legs move towards you is the idea. So inhale, as you exhale, curl your tailbone up Press your hands into your legs so they don't move, right? And then relax on your inhale. So we're curling our tailbone up and pressing against the legs. It's isometric, yeah, good. And then relax on your inhale. Getting into the pelvic floor a little bit and those low belly muscles, right? Inhale, relax. Exhale, curl and press. Inhale, relax, one more. Good. And then go ahead and just let your legs relax again, rock your body, yeah. And we're gonna bring our hands behind our head again. We're gonna do one more exercise on our back that is sort of a, an ab and a connection exercise. So we bring our legs into tabletop and we inhale here. As we exhale, we're gonna curl up and extend our legs to the ceiling. As we inhale, we bend our legs and lie back down, okay? So we're gonna do a little progression. As we exhale, we're gonna curl up and reach for the ceiling. Inhale, lie back down. Nice deep breath. This time we're gonna curl up and extend our legs to the ceiling and then our inhale, we're gonna draw our right leg down toward the mat. And lift it back up, exhaling, inhaling down, exhaling up. Left leg lowers down, however far you're comfortable. Good, inhaling, exhaling up and inhale. Exhale up. So with the breath, with the flow of the breath, we're lowering our right leg this time. Good. Inhale and exhale. Make sure you're breathing deep. Exhale up. Good. <laughs> lowering that left leg down and bringing it back up. Inhale, lower down and relax. Okay, you can release your hands, hug your knees again, rock it around. And then let's hold on to the back of our legs and curl our head up. And if you could just use your legs to help you rock up to sitting, right? Pull yourself on up. And we're gonna keep our, our hands underneath our legs. I'm sort of in Pilates mode right now, you guys. <laughs> We're gonna bring our hands underneath our legs and we're gonna use our hands to help us. We're gonna curl back.
back and round back like this, right? And just go to about where your sacrum is and stop. And then inhale, and then climb back up on your exhale, right? Now, if you don't need your hands, you don't have to use them, but they are definitely helpful for warming up. So we'll inhale at the top as we sort of lift our spine tall. And then as we exhale, we curl, we round back and use our hands to whatever degree we need them. Inhaling at the bottom and then exhaling back up. So we wanna go for our smoothness, right? And articulation. Good. We'll just do that one more time. And maybe you go all the way to your rib cage, maybe not. Maybe you go all the way back, right? However far you feel you can go. It's early. <laughs> Great. And then when we come back to the top, we're going to extend our legs forward and have our feet flexed. Widen your legs to about a straddle that's about the width of your mat. You can use your hands to help you sit tall, or you can sit on a bolster here. You want your spine to be nice and tall. And we're going to reach our arms forward, feet are flexed. And then as imagine you have a wall behind you, so you're going to lift your spine tall as you inhale. And then as you exhale, you're going to peel off that wall, one bone at a time, right? And your arms are reaching out and you're reaching out through the crown of your head as your spine peels off that wall. Okay. Stretching past your feet. Good. And then inhale and here and then as you exhale you're going to stack your spine back up against that wall one bone at a time growing nice and tall all the way to the top. Now rotate your torso very slightly over to the left leg. So you're looking at your left toes, right? Same thing. Nice deep breath as you lift. And then as you exhale, you're going to peel off of that wall. Your arms are reaching. Your crown of your head is reaching past that foot. And then inhale. And then as we exhale, we're going to stack our spine, shoulders relaxed, one vertebra at a time, all the way to the top, back to center. Rotate your torso toward the right leg, same thing. Inhale, lift, exhale, peel off that wall. So we're articulating our spine, right? Reaching. Good. And then take a deep breath and Stacking our spine one bone at a time up against the wall. When you come to the top, bring your arms back to center and then bring your legs closer together. Now, like I said, you can sit on a bolster, you can bend your knees a little bit, but we're going to be sitting this way for a moment with our arms forward, okay, and your palms facing each other. So lifting the spine tall, again, bend your knees if you want to, sit on a bolster, but lifting our spine tall, we're going to open our arms back on our inhale and sort of squeeze the scapula together. Okay? And then exhale, bring your arms back in front. So still feel like you're sort of up against that wall, right? As you inhale, you're going to open and just kind of bring your wings together and your the middle of your back. And then exhale, close. Good. Inhale, open. And exhale, close. Good. And then relax your arms. Bring yourself onto your side. So just coming down onto your side on one arm, lying down. You're going to make sure we're in a straight line here. Legs together and take your top arm to the ceiling. So this is a little bit of a balance challenge. You're gonna circle your arm and try to balance without moving your body. So you're gonna feel all those little muscles, all those stabilizing muscles sort of start to engage to help, help you balance. And then reverse your circle. Yeah. Great. 
and then bring your arm to the ceiling just straight up and then take that top leg with your toes pointed forward bring your top leg up as high as you're able to go whoa <laughs> with your toes pointed forward right and now see if you can draw that circle with your arm so maybe it's a little smaller <laughs> and you can kind of make a kickstand with your bottom toes too right and see how big you can make your circle Woo! and breathe a little side balancing and then reverse your circle yeah holding that leg up And then reaching your arm to the ceiling, point your toes, draw a little tiny circle with that leg, holding yourself nice and still. So I just want to do, let us engage our stabilizing muscles, all those little tiny muscles that help us balance, right? So especially good. Yeah, so just holding that leg up there and breathing. <laughs> Good. And then we'll stop, flex the foot and lower the leg down and go ahead and bring your arm down to the ground, legs together, feet flexed. You're gonna float your legs up, keep them tight together and then just lift your head and shoulders a little bit. You're pressing yourself up just a little bit off the ground here, right? And maybe you want to look down to help your neck because it's a little more comfortable. And then maybe you want to try bringing your arm off the ground or your hand off the ground and balancing too, just for fun, right? See if that works. And we're engaging our side body a little bit. Yeah. And then we'll lower down, relax your hand down, bend your knees so that the knees are kind of stacked on top of each other. Go ahead and press yourself up onto your elbow with your elbow in line with your shoulder. And here, we wanna make sure that we don't let our, our elbow go back. It's gotta be here in line with that shoulder. So you don't want it to come towards your torso. Lift your rib cage, lift your arm, extend your top leg. So what we're gonna do is a little rotation of the shoulder joint. As we bring our arm up over our head, we're rotating our chest pointing down and touching the ground with our fingers. And then we're gonna lift up and we're gonna open to the ceiling as our arm goes back. So we're rotating in the shoulder joint. So go fairly slowly as you do this, rotating as you reach down, right? Turn chest points down and then rotating upward as your arm comes back. Now, if you feel like you can manage the more pressure on that shoulder, lift your hips okay? and continue. Otherwise, keep your hip down and we'll do a couple more. So you're gonna rotate to point the chest down and then you're gonna rotate to point the chest up. Now for extra challenge, don't even lower your hips all the way. If you're able to, maybe you have the upper body strength, you just kiss that mat a little bit with your hip. Right, open and lift. But like I said, go slowly. We have our um, shoulder joint is moving with the weight on it, right? So we wanna be very careful and rotate. There we go. Yeah, so hips are down or hips are up. Hips are resting in between or not. <laughs> Good, and next time your arm comes to the ceiling, go ahead and lower the hip and come up all the way to sitting and cross your top leg over your bottom leg for a moment. We'll just do a little hip stretch in the traditional, um, this way traditional one where you, or you can extend your leg forward if that's more comfortable, right? And just hug your knee in and reach that hip into the mat, lift your spine. Just give that hip a little stretch. Breathe. Good. And then we'll release and come on to our other side, right? So 
fortunately, we only have two sides. Not six, but four. Okay. <laughs> Try to make sure you're in a straight line. Sorry, you can't see my whole body, but well, hopefully my cues are good enough. <laughs> and we're in a straight line here. We take our top arm to the ceiling and we start by circling and noticing if this side's different than the other side. Probably is a little different, right? One side will be stronger probably, right? And circle the other way. Just notice how big you can make your circle. Yeah. And then we'll reach our arm to the ceiling and we'll flex the feet and take that top leg up as high as it'll go with your toes pointing forward, right? And hold it there as we circle our arm. Again, you can make a little kickstand with your bottom toes if that's helpful, but try to keep your body in a straight line so you're really balancing, right? Good. And then reversing our circle. Good. All those little stabilizing muscles working away. <laughs> And then we're gonna just keep that arm reaching up as we point the toes and draw a little tiny circle, holding your leg up and breathing. Yeah. Connecting in with the breath. And then reverse your circle. Good. And then stop, flex the foot, lower the leg down, take your hand in front of you, just relax your hand on the ground, flex the feet, keep your legs together and float them off the ground. And then just maybe press your head up. If that's comfortable for your neck, press your head up too, right? So we're just in a little bit of a crescent or banana shape with our body. And then maybe Try reaching your arm up too and balancing if you want. Optional. And breathe. Sort of getting into the side body muscles a little bit here. And then lowering gracefully <laughs> all the way down. Let the knees bend and press up to the elbow. Come up to your elbow. So elbows in line with the shoulder, and also you want to feel like your torso is in a straight line, right? Head to tailbone. And then we press into the mat, lift our rib cage, take that arm up, and we're going to rotate our chest points down as we take our fingertips to the ground, and then up, and we rotate open. Oh, I forgot, straighten your top leg. <laughs> and then rotate. It just, help, it just helps a little bit with the stabilizing, right? And then opening, yeah. And then the option you have is to lift your hips if that is okay with your shoulder, right? And this particular shoulder might be different, okay, than the other one. So we rotate down and we open and we rotate up and lower the hips or just hover the hips and rotate down. Depending on what your shoulder is um, okay with today, right? And we're breathing. Yeah. Again, we have that the shoulder rotating in the joint. So we want to move slowly and fairly slowly and with awareness here as we move that external rotation and internal rotation. Good. And it's very strengthening, but we have to be careful when we move, when we rotate the shoulder. And then we lift up on this one, lower the hips, lower the arm, and press up to sitting. And just give that leg a little stretch here and into a, um, I forgot what the name of this is in yoga, but it's a seated, a seated hip stretch. So we just want to pull that knee in. And again, your bottom leg can be straight if that's necessary for your legs. Press your hip into the mat, lift your spine, relax your shoulders, and breathe. Good. Good. 
Oh. I miss hearing people. <laughs> I like to hear people's moans and groans, but I miss it on Zoom because we have to, everybody has to be muted. <laughs> okay, <laughs> then we're going to release out of that and we're going to come on to our all fours. And like I mentioned before, if you need extra padding, you have a blanket or a bolster or you roll up your mat, right, for your wrists or your, or your knees. So on our all fours, I'm going to change my map position just a little bit so I can see better. On our all fours, lining up our wrists, spreading our fingers wide. Wrists might be slightly ahead of your shoulders too. You know, that's always okay for especially taking a little pressure off. Pelvis is level. We're going to take our right leg straight back with our toes tucked. Okay. You might need to make any adjustments you need to with your wrists. Place your left hand on your heart. And the pelvis, you're gonna be aware of your pelvis being level and you're gonna rotate your heart to the left. So take your heart, look at that hand as far as it goes and then extend the arm out. And here we don't wanna pull our arm past our shoulder. So you wanna think of pulling your shoulder back, right? To open into that rotation. And don't even think about trying to reach straight up to the ceiling because it probably won't happen. <laughs> Unless you're super flexible <laughs> and just breathe here. Good. And then our arm is gonna go over our head, thumb's gonna point up and we're gonna lift that right leg, right? And breathe. Maybe your, your gaze is forward and down a little bit here. Good. And next exhale brings our hand and knee to the mat. And we extend our left foot back with the toes tucked, pelvis level, and any adjustments you need to make with your left hand, fingers are wide, right hand to the heart. And we're gonna rotate to the right and then extend the arm out Check in with your pelvis. And breathe. <laughs> Good. And then that right arm goes overhead, thumb pointing up, left leg lifts. And deep breath. Good, next exhale brings the hand and knee to the mat. And we probably wanna come off of our wrists for a moment. So a nice thing to do for your wrists when they get um, tired or too much pressure on them is to open and close your hands really fast and hard like this. Really helps um, the wrist because there's no wrist muscles, you know? It's just the connection from your forearm to your hand. And then you can kind of move your fingers and. Shake it out and all that, right? Whatever feels good. <laughs> Flamingo. <laughs> and then we're gonna bring our hands to the mat again, tuck our toes, and we're gonna press the hips up into a downward facing dog. Here we wanna allow the knees to be slightly bent so that we can elongate the spine, lift the tailbone, And then we gradually work our heels down. Yeah, keeping that tailbone lifting. Relax the head, come on back. And then we're gonna allow the body to just sort of rock forward a little bit. So we come more onto our toes, our shoulders more over our wrists, and then rock back onto the heels. Let your body do this little rock forward as much as you're comfortable. Shoulders may come all the way to the wrists and then back pressing the heels down. Keeping that tailbone lifting as we move forward and back. And 
And then with our, next time our heels come down, we're gonna see if we can't walk our hands a little farther away, maybe our feet a little farther back and come slowly into a plank or half plank, or you can come onto your forearms, right? And take a couple deep breaths here. Pressing the ground away, engaging your core. And then see if you can slowly lower yourself down to your belly, letting your knees come first all the way down, right? And we wanna relax our arms for a moment. So just rest your forehead on your hands. And then we're gonna lift our head and chest off of our hands and then open your arms into a sphinx position. So a sphinx position is basically elbows slightly ahead of your shoulders, right? Maybe an inch or so. And you're pressing into the ground to sort of lift yourself up here and relax your pelvis. So it might take a moment to just let your pelvis relax into the ground. It takes a moment for me. <laughs> and then with our palms on the ground, we're gonna slowly straighten our arms. So it's kind of like a modified cobra and you might need to adjust your hands. For me, I can't uh, get into a full cobra comfortably. So this is what I like. But just slowly sort of getting the arms straight here and relaxing your pelvis. And then we're gonna look at our belly. So looking at your belly, feeling that little stretch, right? And then bringing your gaze forward. You kind of think of a cat cow for your upper back, right? And looking at your belly. And a little stretch for your neck. And bringing your gaze forward. And then, we want to align our head with our spine. So you're probably going to look down between your hands, right? And then turn and look over one shoulder. Like somebody's calling you, you're looking back. And then come back to center and turn and look over your other shoulder. Good. And then back to center. And then we're gonna allow our arms to slide out over our head, slowly down. Just relax here for a moment, gathering your reserves. <laughs> and so we're sort of, um, arms are a little wider than your shoulders maybe. You're gonna pull the navel in, press your pubic bone into the mat. Lengthen and lift your left arm and your right leg. And then lower down, relax. Inhale as we pull the navel in, press our pubic bone into the mat. Exhale as we lengthen and lift our right arm and our left leg. And then lower down. So it's a slow swim, right? Inhaling, pull in, press your hip into the mat. Exhale, lengthen and lift, opposite arm and leg. And let your head just go comfortably with that movement, right? However it wants to, right? Maybe you're lifting your head up as you reach and lift your arm and leg and lowering down. Good, inhale, pull the belly in, pressing pubic bone into the mat. Exhale, reach and lift, opposite arm and leg. One more time or make sure you're even on both sides. <laughs> and after you land on this one, we're gonna do all extremities, right? So pull the belly in and you're gonna reach and lift arms and legs and lift off the mat. And just kind of feel like somebody's pulling as you stay here and breathe, somebody's pulling your arms and your legs, right? They're just pulling them away from you. Stretching you out a bit, right? And just breathe. Good, and lower all the way down and relax. <laughs> Go 
Go ahead and place your hands back under your forehead. And we're gonna um, bend our knees. So, you know, so that your feet are a 90 degree angle from your knees, that sort of thing with your feet flexed. Put your heels together, open your knees slightly apart. So what we're doing here is a little bit wider than a hip width apart knees, feet are flexed, heels are together. And every time you exhale, you're gonna press your heels into each other and squeeze. And then relax on your inhale. So it's an isometric, right? It's isometric. You're gonna, it doesn't look like you're doing anything. <laughs> Squeeze on your exhale and release. Good. And we're going to add to that. Every time you squeeze on your exhale, you're also going to lift your knees off the mat. Yeah, squeeze and then relax everything as you inhale. And then lift the knees and squeeze on your exhale. Just a little lift, right? Exhale, squeeze. Inhale, release. Last one. And then when we relax our legs, go ahead and let them extend long on the mat. And we'll bring our, our, our hands under our shoulders and just draw your shoulders down your back and go ahead and press up into a little cobra stretch right here, continuing up onto your knees. Bringing our knees under us and we're going to curl our tailbone under and round back onto our heels into a child's pose stretch. So reach your arms out front of you. And you might like to widen your knees. I do. Up to you. Whatever position you like. I like to widen my knees and then widen my feet to open the hip. Right? So if that's comfortable for you, and breathe. And then we're going to come back up to sitting. Um, this way. So here we're going to do a little combo, a little blend, <laughs> um, where we take our hands behind our hips here. And your fingers can point wherever they're comfortable and bring them, you know, wherever they're comfortable, either pointing away from you, pointing out to the side. And just sort of lift your chest and press your heart up. Be kind of close to you like that. So we're going to inhale. And then as we exhale, we're going to lift our hips up. Right? So coming into however high they, however high they go, whether they come all the way up or not. And then inhale, exhale to lower the hips. Inhale to Take hold of your legs and lift your feet. Exhale into boat pose or what we call in Pilates teaser, right? Knees can be bent, legs can be straight. And then we bend, we put our feet down and go back, inhaling, exhaling up. So we'll just do this a couple more times. Just a little flow, right? Good. Inhaling at the top. And then exhaling to lower down, inhaling, reaching. You're still leaning back a bit, lifting the feet, exhaling into, if you can, flattening the back, right? If that works for you. Or knees bent. Inhale, hands to the mat, exhale, press the hips up. Inhale at the top, exhale, lower down. Inhale here, exhale. Good. Maybe we do one more. <laughs> Inhale, nice and deep, exhale up. 
connecting in with the breath, even with the movement integrated, right? Inhaling, exhaling down, inhaling into, exhaling into, good. and then bringing your feet down and sitting up. And we'll bring ourselves to seated position with, if you need a bolster to sit on, Great. If you don't, if you can have a straddled, um, not too wide, but a straddle with the legs, great. Lift the pelvis, bring it forward, right? Pelvis first, and then a little stretch. And here, after we bring our pelvis forward, sometimes we can round our spine, only if that's comfortable. Maybe you can grab your toes. Maybe not, looks like everybody can, that's great. <laughs> Pressing the legs into the ground, nice. And then we're gonna sit up and for the last little stretch is gonna be a movement stretch called saw. So our arms are out, palms are down, we're sitting tall and we're gonna rotate without moving our hips. We're gonna rotate our torso and we're gonna stretch across for that opposite foot, right? We're rooting our hips into the ground and then we're going to lift up nice and tall on our inhale and rotate over to the other side. And we're going to stretch across. You can use your back hand to press you forward if you like. And then we inhale to center and rotate. Or you're either doing that or you're reaching that back hand away from you. So you're stretching your arms away from each other, right? And then we lift up tall and rotate and reach. with the flow of the breath, right? Nice and tall, rotate and reach. Good, let's do one more or just make sure you're even on both sides, right? Saw is a beautiful exercise because it really gives you a stretch and a twist and all kinds of good stuff. <laughs> Good. And then just bring yourself comfortably sitting. Maybe you're cross legged. Yeah. Good. And lifting the arms, bring your arms back and up, reaching to the sky. And then hands coming together in prayer in front of the heart. Thank you all for joining me. Namaste. Thank you so much, Deb. Would you like to let us know how people can get a hold of you and what else you're doing? Um, sure. Well, um, one thing that you can uh, definitely have access to that's free <laughs> is my YouTube channel. <laughs> So I have like about 30, mostly Pilates, but also yoga. And um, I do like Meridian Systems Yoga a little bit too. A few of those videos are on there. It's a real variety. So that's just called uh, Pilates with Deb Tramposh. So if you just go to YouTube and, and put Pilates with Deb Tramposh, it'll come up. And then you can just access any videos you want. They're usually no more, they're, I don't think they're any more than a half an hour long, but they're mostly like 15 minutes to a half an hour long each. So, yeah. So, and I also, I'm doing Zoom um, three days a week for mostly, it's for my people that I left on the West Coast, all my students, but anybody else can join in, you know, there's room. <laughs> so if anybody wants to join in the Zoom classes, that's Pilates, it's not yoga, it's just Pilates, but um, yeah. I do that, um, it's 12.30 East Coast time, 9.30 West Coast time, AM. 